So just when it seemed like the world had finally given up on Hamzat Shemaev, we get the news that he's going to be fighting Robert Whitaker in a title eliminator fight. And I mean, this is what we've all been waiting for, right? We've been waiting for Hamzat to finally get a big test at middleweight, which he needed. He, he did not deserve the title shot after fighting Usman. But interestingly enough, Hamzat opens up as the favorite in this matchup, and, and that, that surprised me. But I, I want to be clear, I, I know the very last video I made, I was kind of trashing Hamzat's wrestling. But th the truth is, he is extremely skillful. I don't care that it was on two weeks notice. There are very, very few humans alive who can do this to Kamaru Usman. Without a doubt, Hamzat is a championship level fighter. It it's just that simple. But can he beat Robert Whitaker? Well, there are some variables we need to look at. And here is the biggest one. Is Hamzat going to sprint at him in the very first round like he's done to every single opponent he's fought so far? For the longest time, there was a lot made about Hamzat's cardio. And a lot of it came from guys who trained with him, who just had these insane stories about how he could go all day long. Which is interesting because we've definitely seen Hamzat slow down after the first round. But I think the reason why that is, is pretty clear. It is just human anatomy. You cannot sprint as hard as you can for long periods of time. It just isn't possible. When you look at guys who have phenomenal cardio, like Volkanovski or Marab, they can keep up a very high pace for five rounds, but they're not giving it everything they've got. But Hamzat is. He is giving it everything he's got as soon as the fight starts. If he couldn't finish Kevin Holland, he would have been royally fucked because he went at him as hard as he could. But you know, he did finish him, so you know, props to him there. And he almost finished Usman. So, you know, going all out did award him the 10-8, which allowed him to win the fight, but if it was five rounds, he would have lost. And the other important thing to understand here is just because you have really good cardio doesn't mean it's going to translate over to the fight. It's a big misconception when someone gasses out in a fight and people say, oh, well, he needs to work on his cardio. Well, odds are he does work on his cardio. And odds are in training camp, he's able to go five, five minute rounds easily. But when you go out there for the actual fight in front of a stadium of people with half of your paycheck on the line when you lose, your heart rate is going to be going way faster than it normally does. It, that is very, very tough to avoid. And because of that, you are going to fatigue way quicker in an actual fight than you do in training. So point is with all of this, Hamzat cannot sprint at Robert Whitaker. I, I think that is a horrible, horrible idea because Robert Whitaker is extremely well-rounded. And on the feet, you got to give him a huge advantage here. Hamzat is not a bad striker by any means. He has power. He can knock you out with one punch. He fights just as good from southpaw as he does from orthodox. And when you pair all that together with how good his wrestling is, you've got a serious problem. But I got to call it how it is. Hamzat went to war with Gilbert Burns on the feet, who, as we know, is known for having a lot of power and speed, but not the highest level striking by any means. He just kind of lunges in with a lot of big overhands. And you know, look, don't get me wrong, he times his overhands very well. It's very formidable. But Whitaker was able to make his second fight with Adesanya very close, and that was almost entirely on the feet. And I would even say that Usman proved to be the more effective striker against Hamzat, though there may be some asterisks there because Hamzat did break his hand in that fight. But you look at Whitaker's ability to slip and then find counters. It's very, very high level, and his combinations, the way he mixes in his high kicks with his punches, it, it is a lot better than Hamzat, and that's just the fact of the matter. But of course, Hamzat's game plan is going to be to wrestle in this fight, so I mean, how is that going to look? Well, Hamzat has an extremely fast shot. It's one of his best attributes. A lot of guys rely on backing you up to the fence in order to get their takedowns. But Hamzat has a very high ability to get deep on takedowns from out in the open. And it is a great attribute to have. But I will say, in the past, something that is so terrifying about Hamzat is how freakishly strong he is in these wrestling exchanges. But the thing there is, it's pretty much only been shown against welterweights. I'm hesitant to say he's going to be that strong compared to real 185ers. 
But I think there is an aspect of Whitaker's game that Humzat can exploit, and that is, on the feet, Whitaker has always used the blitz. You know, he starts on the outside, he moves forward very quickly with his hands down, almost fainting like he's going to the body, then he comes up around and then lands upstairs. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity to time takedowns as he's blitzing in. And even though Hamzat may not be as strong, a big aspect of his game is how he mixes in his jujitsu. I mean, he's very good at taking the back. So what he needs to do is get Whitaker to turtle so he can get his hooks in. And that is where he's very dangerous. But... Whitaker does have phenomenal takedown defense. 185 definitely isn't known to be a super stacked division by any means. There's not a ton of examples of Whitaker fighting really high-level wrestlers. But you look at his fight with Yoel Romero. And there were moments where Yoel timed really good takedowns off of Whitaker's blitzes. And Whitaker was still able to defend. And even when Yoel was able to get Whitaker down, Robert was so quick with the scrambles. Of course, he had to turtle to get back up, and there were moments that he was leaving space for someone to slide their hooks in, but it was very brief. And when Usman fought Hamzat, there were definitely moments you can tell he was very bothered by the strength, and Hamzat would do a good job of hooking his leg to trap Usman in the turtle position so he can get his hooks in. But I'm not sure if Hamzat's going to be able to replicate that against Whitaker who was able to regularly pry Yoel Romero's giant-ass arms off of him from the body lock. But here is Humzat's path to victory. Time a good takedown off of Whitaker's blitz out in the open. Get him flat on his back, make him turtle, and be ready to slide your hooks in. If he can do that, I can 100% see him winning this fight. An issue he was having at times with Usman was on the feet, he really wasn't able to pressure Usman at all, so he was forced to take shots from way outside. Even then, he still was able to finish a few of them because of how fast he is, but it also allowed Usman to defend quite a few of them, keeping the fight on the feet where he was able to win the last two rounds. But Whitaker will be trying to close the distance with him. He's going to try to blitz, and that's going to give Humzat the opportunity to get takedowns, but... All around, I gotta be honest here, I think Robert Whitaker is the way more skillful fighter. I think he's better on the feet, I think he's shown to have insanely high level takedown defense. Even if Hamzat does take his back, is he gonna be able to finish him? For the most part, when Hamzat had Usman's back, he was way too high. The one time he got good head positioning was when they stood up and he sunk in the neck crank, but then, you know, got slammed of course. So if Hamzat plays all of his cards right, he paces himself very well, he very patiently waits for the perfect opportunity to shoot, and he stays defensively sound on the feet, I definitely see a path to victory for him. But all around, to me, I think you gotta pick Robert Whitaker in this matchup. I think he's going to have a big advantage on the feet. I think on paper, he should be able to stop Hamzat's wrestling. We're really not going to know until we see it, because... We've never seen Humzat fight an elite 185er before. So I, I won't say anything for absolute certainty, but if Whitaker stays the underdog, I think he is a very good pick on a parlay.